project manager on the project was answering questions at 1245, 1247 was the last email that he went out on the project. So he's going to also provide his email so that you guys can email or right. him It's on the flyer that you picked up. If you uh, turn to the back page at the bottom of the front, the left one, it's at the very bottom of the page. And there's obviously a lot of questions, and he's going through them one by one, so obviously there's, you know, getting them to get our project manager on the project and trying to answer them. So, and we do want you to submit these questions, and if you want to talk about the project and everything, but we do want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity um, to ask them. So, but, Hi, I'm Carly Sanchez, 125 13 Southwest 104 Lane. Um, I also work in the public sector, and I have to tell you that I'm quite embarrassed to see that the staff, your staff, all I see is the back of their heads. They should be up there so that they're addressing the problem. That's the way you address the problem. I am, I'm, see, I'm, I'm, it's a comment. I'm not asking a question, I'm giving you a comment. Okay. So I'm, I would like to see them the next time that we meet. I would like to see their faces rather than the back of their heads. Be that as it may. I'll blame myself for that. That's okay. I'll blame you because you are, you, you are their supervisor or you're directing this meeting, and if it were me in your position, that wouldn't have happened. With that said, two lanes of traffic turning into Devon Air is ridiculous. You're dumping the traffic into a residential area. That's what you're doing. going to turn around and they're going to go and try to cut through the residential area, through the residential neighborhood, so that they can get to 120th or so that they can get to 127th Avenue. This is a bad idea. You are affecting the neighborhood. Another comment. That presentation that you gave with the all descriptive responses needed to be provided when people came in so that they can walk away with non-answers or whatever it is that was said. The gentleman that, uh, the traffic engineer, I'd like to know what is acceptable to Miami-Dade County. What is an acceptable crash rate to Miami-Dade County? Whatever is acceptable to Miami-Dade County is not acceptable to me, and I can tell you that it's not acceptable to anybody else here. <laughs> when you turn left on 122nd Avenue and you go into that neighborhood, two turning lanes at a high rate of speed, because no matter what you think, they will be turning at a high rate of speed. They will crash into those walls, they will crash into old children, they will crash into anything that's there. Because we see it every day. We live here and we understand it. This is a bad idea. I cannot believe that it has gone this far because this public meeting costs money. I cannot believe it has gone this far. So I need it, I will speak to my representative, I will do anything I can to support it in killing this. It's ridiculous. Thank you very much. It's a nightmare. Thank you very much. I have to raise that up. I guess that's a good thing. And in fact, we will mayor down to Cover Bay. I know the position you're in. I've been there before. I understand it's a little tough. I've been to a number of MPX tolls meetings, and uh, it's never easy. I'm going to ask you, how much time do I have? Two minutes? <laughs> Two minutes? You're, you're representing very many people. Well, I've been in a number of meetings, and the people that I've worked with who are very well spoken, well, very well versed in this, is Jane Walker. I will see my time to her. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Man. About no, 20 minutes. This is not northern Florida. All right. First of all, thank you very much for doing this. It's much easier to be me than it is you tonight. So I do appreciate that. Okay, a couple of comments. The name of this project is the Turnpike Widening Project. I, I take umbrage with the name. I think it should have been renamed into the Turnpike Express Toll Lane Project. Why Express Toll Lanes? Because people who hear the term Express Lane don't always understand that an express lane is a toll lane. It's a relatively new concept. Now, you were not going to answer my question about how much uh, a trip charge was going to be, but I, I remember watching the MPO meeting where uh, Anand Pasar came and 
there were lots of questions about revenue projections, and I know that if you're going to be issuing bonds, then you have to know how much money you need to raise, and you need to know how you can service those bonds, so therefore you need to know what the tolls are. So I find it hard to believe that you're not able to give us what a trip charge at the ceiling and the floor will be. So I am not considering this a public information meeting. You had a meeting in the middle of the summer on Bird Road at 143rd or 142nd. So what I would respectfully ask is that we have a do-over where you are prepared to have a real public information meeting where there is a sharing of information where the residents can ask questions and where you will answer them. And in fact, some of my questions were very basic and they were contained in that 400-page study, but you just simply did not want to confirm that what I said was true. That, that's, and, that's, that is not the reason why they were asked, like an attorney asked the questions. I'm, I'm not going to respond to questions. Well, you want to ask fair, fairly simple <laughs> questions, okay. that's fine, but I'll have but to this, but the, the point of the matter is, is that this crowd hasn't read the 400-page study, but Miles Moss did, and that stuff's in there. But when it's a yes-no or it's a asking how much a trip charge is going to be, that's very basic. So at any rate, I'm going to move on. Um, so um, I also want to point out to this crowd that you were counting pedestrian traffic during peak times, but you didn't count it during school times. We were there this afternoon. We saw it. Okay, but it wasn't in that 400-page study. Right. That's why would you study something like that? That's just a question. You don't have to answer that, but why would you have studied that in 2008? And, and then the next thing I want to say, I don't even know what the next thing is I want to say, but it was a really important thing, so just bear with me. I'm sorry to be so tough on you. But um, I want to know if you had interfaced with the Miami-Dade school system. I know on the MPO there is one member of the school board, but I also know that when I talked to two people who have been in those MPO meetings, one a former member of the MPO who is no longer on the MPO, and another one who is an aide to a commissioner who sits on the MPO, I asked them, do you know that those cars are only going to go on to express lanes? And guess what? They didn't know. So they were just thinking that you were going to have a third turnpike ramp on one at Kendall, one in the middle, a mile away, and one on 120th Street. So three turnpike ramps within three miles while you're really getting this. So the only thing I'm going to ask you tonight is if this thing does go in, and I'm thinking it's 26 million to put the ramp on, and I heard estimates of about 50 million to connect to the 836. So that's 76 million we know now. It's going to be amortized by the time you issue 30 year bonds, so triple that number. And so that's a lot of dough. And if it's a boondoggle, meaning that if the people in the homestead at West Kendall who don't make the same amount of money as the people in Pinecrest and Coral Gables and some of those other um, you know, uh, communities where the demographics are a little bit different, if they don't use these express lanes, it's going to be a big, bad, expensive boondoggle. So of course, when you do your three year or five year um, you know, uh, increases for inflation, of course, that'll help cover some of that, but you might have to raise the tolls. So here's the thing I'm asking you. If this goes in and we can't kill it, which I'm hoping we can, and if it doesn't work and you don't raise the money, I'm going to ask you to put a toll uh, point in Orange County because there's not one there. And I know a lot of people come to Disney World and run through that portion of the turnpike, and I kind of don't think that we should be paying for that in our region. So maybe they could help to pay for the $76 million
I just see the women's <laughs> yes. And, and, and we, hope, we hope have a real sharing of information in another do-over. And I know everybody here is going to bring five people, so we're going to be in a bigger room. And we'll just go over when we get some answers to our questions. And I just appreciate that so much because I know your public service is more than us. get answers to your questions. Well, but well, we like them in the context I'm of the I'm going to make sure everybody has an opportunity to speak tonight. There's still that, people that have I'm not not on that topic. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. Chase and the neighborhood right on Killian, and you talked about expanding the lanes. Is that going to encroach on my neighborhood? No. Or right into the development, so you're not going to. Not purchasing any right away. So, I'm sorry, what? Work around purchasing any right away or property. No, not right away. Right away? Yeah, right away. Right away? Right away. Oh, right away. Okay. 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 Right away is a term we use. Okay. No, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
and DOT, and DOT made no uh, attempts to really notify members. I went to the absolute minimum to notify residents about what's going on in the community. And this has angered many, many uh, in the community. <laughs> Number two, it's disingenuous to have held a meeting in the, in the beginning of August in an area that has, uh, that is far away from the community. Heldenburg Road, that is absolutely, that, that's nonsense. That should never have happened. That should have been held in the community where it affects the community. Number three, um, I'd like to, 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 let, to point out to, to the FDLT, I'm sure you know, the, 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 tr the first light that starts uh, uh, before this proposed light, 120 seconds of the proposed light, that's 350 yards, that's nothing, you're, you're, and, and then another 500, uh, 500 yards to the next light, right? That is a trap. Any accident that happens between there will, will trap all the residents of there, and it's not a matter of if a traffic accident will happen. It will happen, and it will trap every resident within that section of, of a road. <laughs> Lastly, um, I'd say that these lanes are gonna, not gonna benefit the, the people in this community. It absolutely will not. These are uh, lanes that I would say are for the rich and famous. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna pay 10 bucks at the peak of rush hour, rush hour because I can't afford it. It's, it's crazy to even have that. If it were something, let's say, that, that uh, uh, it, would, it would benefit all the community, anybody can use that ramp and we can get on and off on Bird, on bird Road, um, uh, maybe, maybe it would be passable. It would pass the smell test, but it does not pass the smell test, right? It does not. It is also crazy to, to assume that this is not going to have a negative, in, uh, it's not going to affect the, the people within the community. It is will it will increase um, my commute to work because as it is already for me to get out from 111 Terrace to get to Killian, it takes me 10 minutes, 10 minutes just to get out of there, and another uh, 20 to 30 minutes just to get to the other side of Killian. Right? I can I can just imagine what's going to happen during the construction, and I see no benefit to me at all whatsoever. I, as a representative of the Devon Air HOA number one. I will tell you that we are in complete opposition to this project. We will not support it, and we will work hard against it to hope, hopefully kill this project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lorraine Jassic. I live in uh, Devon Air. I was uh, since 1978. Those were the original um, residents in the south part of Devon Air. I've watched the community grow. And I have some real concerns that I, I want to ask you about. You can answer them another time. I do appreciate you having this meeting. Um, I also was blindsided. I found out last night about this meeting. Was this advertised to the neighbors or? Uh, these are my questions. Uh, number one, I have grandchildren who go to Devon Air Elementary, and it horrifies me to see that gigantic double decker bridge and all that traffic. And I noticed you had noise walls going up and down. I don't know what those are going to look like. The noise walls I see are not very nice. The ones I've seen in previous three places, I don't know what these are going to be like, but they're not very pretty, they're not appealing to, to property values, number one. Number two, I can't imagine you think the noise is going to be less for those school children when they have cops, corn, on, off and on. That can't, that can't be good for their studies, let alone um, you know their attention. Um, I also don't understand what you were saying when you talked about the potential parking situation at Devon Air Park, how that was going to improve. I don't know where you could put any more cars over there. We've got some additional right away in that area. Okay, I, I don't understand. I have to see that. Um, there's additional property there. There is? Oh, I don't know where. But I'll, I'll, you know, I'll look at when you, when you put it out again. Um, also, I just don't like it. I think it's too much. If you can somehow, you guys are very smart. You did a great job. The visuals are beautiful. But if you could move that, like on Kendall, where they do have all the entrances and exits on 120 Street, and leave our intersection the way it is, that's just too much going on there. Too many cars. Too many cars.
and I, I would even go for it even if it was zero cents. Like the last gentleman said, he would pay, maybe it was a little bit of money, no money. I don't want that there. We can go north, we can go south. We have to wait a little bit. Okay, that's the price we pay. I don't want two lines going into debt in there like that lady said. That's going to be a nightmare. I don't want all that commotion by the kids trying to learn. I just don't want it. It's not for this area. Thank you. Thank you. If we could do our best to try to stick to two minutes, if we got 20 more people, that's going to be probably close to an hour by the time people get up there. I will be short. Thank you. My name is JC. I'm really the local with the office. I'm Commissioner of Santa Suarez, District 7, Miami-Dade County. And I want to stress the point here. Commissioner Suarez's initiative is to the preservation of quality of life and the improvement of quality of life. Uh, I'm going to read my name in phone number cell. And also, you're welcome to emails or contact us with any concerns that you may have in regard to this project or anything else. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Carlos Garcia, and Mrs. Lyons, I gotta tell you something. Please don't leave the room. Her father is a man that was so respected in this community that they named this road in front of this building just recently after your father. Okay? If your father stood up for the community, okay? Which I intend to do. Okay. I told for 10 months I have sat low because I have been grieving my father. But this is a community that my father worked day and night to preserve. Yes. And I will not allow any government agency to come in here and turn around our way of life to suit them, to pay money for toys that we will never be able to afford. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would feel like a heel if I if I, if I was responsible for the way that woman just left this room. All right, let's let's say this right now. Are we gonna allow everybody to speak as long as they want? Is yes. there anybody that's that's coming up in the next ten or twelve or how many people we have left? If you want everybody to talk as long as they can, everybody's fine with that? Well, yes. Yes. Okay. My name is Carlos Garcia. Now my group uh, I am not a paid person, I'm not a lobbyist or anything like that, but my group, I will take a lot of credit for bringing a lot of people here tonight. My three daughters attend Devonair School, and I've been in constant communication with uh, D.D. Jimeno from the PTSA. I want to say that um, primarily our group has always talked about the polls, and things like that, but in this case, the safety of the students at Devonair K-8 School, you know, has to be looked at in a way that um, other roads may not have been built. I, I would ask how many other roads or exits on the turnpike are within such a close proximity to a school and a public park as is 104th Street and the turnpike. <laughs> we have to also keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, one thing that has not been said tonight, I want everybody to really listen to the statement. This is a project that has never been done in the United States of America and in the entire world, okay? Now, let me explain that statement. There has never been a toll road within an already tolled turnpike. <laughs> it has never happened in the, in the history of the United States. We are the guinea pig for this project, okay? If this project fails, okay, guess who's gonna end up paying the bill on this project, not only financially, but by cost, you know, the, the cost of our quality of life, the safety of our kids, pedestrians and things like that, we are in this community. You know, I'm not an engineer, but I, something tells me that somehow it can be made to work on 120th Street and Kendall Drive. I know one of the biggest obstacles is the Stamper Creek Service Plaza in the middle, just south of 104th Street. That is a, that is a, partly maybe why they have to stop it at 152nd and then continue it past the service plaza. You know, if it's such a, nobody uses that service plaza. You know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's probably the deadest service plaza in the entire network. Tear it down. You know, you want to do this? Tear it down and, and 
you have a lot of room right there in that in the median there of that service plaza that you can use. Again, I'm not an engineer, but it just, you know, I'm a common sense man. Um, you know, one thing, I take my three daughters, my wife and my three kids every tonight, and I walk them and I take them to school every day and I cross 122nd Avenue uh, to get them to, to school. And I can tell you that exasperated drivers that are stuck in that traffic have actually lunged at me and my children because they are on the phone, but they're so exasperated the fact that they're stuck in wall-to-wall -wall traffic that I have to charge that twice crossing 122nd Avenue. This situation with this bridge, I think will only further exasperate the situation. You know, something tells me that that's, that's what's going to happen. You know, they've already said that the traffic is going to increase in the area. Um, very conservative number of 3%, I think it's going to be much higher. You know, and also I'd like to say that this agency, uh, uh, the, the lack of outreach, this is a high impact, low information project, okay? We're, you know, we're talking about spending some time here tonight, but we're going to have to live with this, if this thing is for the next 30, 40, 50 years. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about this. You know what I mean? Don't rush us along. You know, we're going to have to bear the brunt of this thing if this thing is. And I, I hope that Frank Artillas uh, can listen to the community and, and say, you know, one thing I, I would ask you, sir, is there a no build option on this? Is that even on the table? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. We're here tonight to listen to everybody. It's not that we're trying to show anything that everybody's throat. Somehow or another, the impression is out there. We are here to listen to your comments tonight. That's right. why we're here. We didn't have to come to the meeting. We wanted to come to the meeting because we wanted to hear what people had to say. So. Excuse me. You, you said you didn't have to come to this meeting? Since when does the United States... No, I'm just saying it's not It's not a required meeting, but we want to come to them as soon as have concerns about them. Right. But, uh, you know, a part of... A part of we, we want to hear what everybody has to say. We're, we're, how many how many pages of notes do we have? Right. I, I hope that in America we still can make a difference. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. 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 We're going to go back and take a look at how many pages. We've got seven full pages of comments so far. Right. And, you know, and first of all, and, and I do want to say as much as I disagree with this project, I do want to thank you for coming out tonight. I know this must be a hard thing, and I want to thank everybody in the first row in the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, I, I've met with Gus Pago and all the people at, at, my, at MDX and everything like that. I know this is not hard, but also we have to remember something. Also, I just mentioned MDX. Miami Dade Expressway Authority is about to embark on another toll ramp over the turnpike down on 100 Southwest 128th Street. I don't know if you're aware of that. That project is fully funded, and it's slated to start construction around the same time that this Sir, if we could keep it on this project, I just want to... Okay, okay. <laughs> but this is, this is the relevant point. Now we have, we're going to have another toll road on Southwest 128th Street that isn't a commercial, non-residential area. Why do we need this just less than a mile away? Why do we need this? You know, and I'm saying, I'm just saying, please be reasonable. If Anna Persard, if you're watching this video, if you're listening to this audio, reading these notes, you know, Diane Gutierrez, if you're reading these notes, please listen to this community. We believe that this is not necessary and it's not, it shouldn't be done next to our kids' school in a public park. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, number 23.
when you do certain treatments, countermeasures, we call them safety countermeasures, there's been proven studies that show that you can reduce crashes. And what I had shown was that one of the things that we're doing by converting that single left to the dual left that you know, people have complained about, that does reduce crashes by 99%. It's proven. There's been studies, national studies. Now, that's just for that one movement. That's not going to say that in the middle of the night, which is actually what occurred with those fatalities, people speeding along 104th Street and somebody going north on 122nd Avenue, they're going to broadside it. That's not an engineering solution. That means that somebody was disobeying the stop button. I agree, but adding on to that, you're adding what you said um, on express exit. Coming from the trunk bank, which you already had a high yeah. speed enough as it is, my dad was T-bone at that time night, and that was just on a regular road. Imagine coming off the express bank and coming at high speed and you're curving off. Really? How long does it take for you to say, okay, let's slow down because I'm going into a residential area? Right.
They don't outweigh the cost. They just right. don't. Please understand that. Please. speed lanes along 995. One thing I noticed uh, directly was that with that implementation, sure there was some people who had to drive a little bit faster, but what I saw more was the amount of auto accidents like tripled during that first year. At least during that. I don't have any solid statistics, so I'm not trying to make a big thing there, but I'm saying there's going to be a lot more accidents. Now, what I also noticed was that people that would get on that speed lane um, I have a couple of people that I noticed in particular. It would be the ones that seemed to be late for work and didn't care what it was going to cost so that they could speed. So now not only would they do the legal speed limit, but they would therefore go over the speed limit so that they could get to it. And it didn't matter if they were paying you know, five, six bucks extra to get there. They were going to pay it because they were not responsible enough to get there earlier and to drive safely down the street. Now, of course, the people who can't afford that, of course, they're going to stay in the right lane and not going to use this speed lane anyway. Now, I know something that's really odd and rare, especially in county politics and state politics, is to mix common sense with county policy or state policy. But every day I would go and I worked downtown Miami, I worked in the Doral District, and I worked in North Miami. And I had to get on and off the turnpike from my house off of 122nd Avenue. And I knew that I had a boss all those years that was going to get on my case if I was late. And I have always known there was congestion in that area. So here's a bizarre concept. Instead of doing all this construction, why don't we just ask people to leave their homes a half an hour early? You know? Duh. I went ahead and I would do things because I was working a standard shift that was during high traffic hours. So, instead of sitting at the table in my kitchen and having a cup of coffee and reading my morning paper, I would leave a half an hour, sometimes 45 minutes, or even an hour earlier to beat the traffic. So I adjusted my schedule. I would get to my office. I know this is uncommon for a county employee. I would get there early and read my newspaper and have my coffee. You know, on the county, at the county office, never drinking or my coffee on county time at all, by the way. I want to point that out. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, you know, this is great. I really appreciate your intentions of trying to make the conditions for us better. And I sincerely think that that's what you're trying to do. But this is not going to make the conditions better because there's always been congestion along 104. And I don't care if they put up a solid steel tube crossing 104th Street. I'm not letting my 12-year-old cross the street from the north side of 104th Street down to the south side. Now. We have got one of the greatest principals ever. Not just saying that because he's sitting over there, but he has been out in front of this school every day since day one that he's been assigned there. Every day, going and coming, you'll see his face there. So please make use of this fantastic resource and talk to him about uh, the traffic in the area. Right now, there's 1,500 students that are going to Devonair K-8. Okay, of those 1,500, each of them's got to have a parent or two. So now the congestion out there, I mean, I was out there assisting with traffic for the first couple of weeks of school. And you didn't and, tell about it, that's admirable. And yes, yes, I lost a few pounds dodging the, the cars, but so I know that the traffic's out there. But I also know that when you're talking about people coming back and forth, no, there's not a lot of people crossing 104th or 122nd Avenue. Because I love my kids. I'm not going to let them cross the street. And you know what? I'm not going to do it myself if I don't have to. So I apologize for taking more than a few minutes, but I do appreciate what you're trying to do, but I don't think this is going to be the right way to go about it. Okay? God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have we have uh, politicians, we have engineers, we have doctors. Uh, I'm surrounded by so many VPs with the Baptist. I work for Baptist. So 104, 104 is my lifeline. I can tell you to the second, 
how long it takes me, because I take that 262 days, right? So that avenue right now, I'm, I'm willing to spend the time that is needed for 120 seconds when I drop my kids. I have two kids that are deaf and there. And that man, you're fairly new to the community, but what you've done, he's not only educating our, our kids, but he's also educating their parents. Because all of a sudden, we hit, he just came in. And so this is nothing about rebuilding the entire city. It's about educating the community. And that's what he's done. He has, at least me, he has educated me not to stop, not to let my car running, move along. And I'm telling you, this just started about two, three weeks. And you have seen, you definitely see that. When it is. So where are we going for in the bed? I think that, you know, we should take a little bit of focus on where we need to put our resources, where we need to do with our money, because education is more powerful than anything that you can do here. 26.6 million, believe me, that's, you know, it's nothing compared to other things they've done. So education is more powerful than that, and taking the time to educate that community yourself and ourselves. We don't have to wait for the politicians to do it for ourselves. I think myself, I take uh, runs every Saturday, uh, I'm part of a run club that, they, that is on 117. We are about 350 strong people, okay? And you're about to take that away from us. And I'm teaching my kids to enjoy their community. And like I said, I don't have 20 years of experience of living there. I'm only there three years, and believe me. And that's one of the reasons that I enjoy it, because I have that lifeline right there, that from Devonair at 8, 12, I leave Devonair. I'm at 107 at 8.19, crossing the bridge at 8.20. And this is 262 days. I can tell you that to a second. And believe me, whoever tells you that from 117 then 104 to 107 then 104, it takes you a long time, it doesn't. It's the most, it's the faster way, it opens up. And the lane that opens up the most is the lane on the right that goes into that A74. Nobody takes that. I take that every single day. And what stops me is the bus. If the bus doesn't stop, I'm golden because I'm going 40 miles an hour. Before that, on 117, 104, I, no one is in danger because we're going five miles an hour. We are willing to go five miles an hour and go and cross that because, you know, it makes sense for us. It, it doesn't seem we're not going to put ourselves in, in, in danger. So think about it. You have a great party, but it's not for this community. So no. thank you for what it is. Thank you for what it is. I think you heard enough of us. Some of us, you know, yeah, we do have uh, great positions out there, but common sense, you know, it, it just doesn't work for this community. Definitely take it somewhere else. Thank, thank you. He already spoke. Is there someone else who has it yet? What number? Somebody on the speaker card with another number? 27. 27, okay. We don't want to be speaking. If you want me to tell you, you're going to get it. Okay, for Southwest 99 Terrace, I've also been in the community for 32 years, and I was one of the other four people at your other meeting, uh, where I'm sure you enjoyed it a whole lot more. I'm curious where he said 24. I know where we had the last thing. I know there was a lot more than that. Four. 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 You had more people from the Kendall area because you had you were also speaking about Bird Road. So you had other people that came from Bird Road. Oh, I'm sorry. So okay. from our area, I, I heard was, say it, I as, as, as I mentioned that day, most of the people did not get a letter. My neighbors only found out because I gave them a letter. And you also held a meeting at the very tail end of the summer where no one's in town, so it was impossible. Okay, you mentioned that traffic east of 122nd or 117 would decrease. How would that decrease? If you have an exit and you have Miami Dade students, so students who are exiting on a hundred would that are taking that express lane would be exiting on 104th rather than maybe Kendall Drive to get to school. So that would increase the traffic of people trying to go east. As to uh, accidents, it would they would increase. We might be at normal now, but then just like you're bringing traffic from Kendall on 120th, you will be decreasing their traffic, increasing our traffic, and our accidents will also be increasing. Okay, the corner house on 122nd Avenue and 104th Street, they just built a new house. They must not know anything about the area because that wall 
He already spoke. He spoke already. We had anyone, anybody else? Yes. Yeah. I don't see exactly what we're doing. The principal is the one. Yeah, he's the principal. Okay. He's the principal. Yeah, if you, if you could, just to somebody have everybody that hasn't spoken. Well, that's yeah. No, 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 no. He's, he's, he's spoken already. He spoke. I understand. Yeah, they changed the rules. Is there another, is there another speaker? Other than, other than the principal. Is there another speaker? Be respectful, Carlos. Is there another speaker that needs another card? He actually asked for another card. So are there any more speakers other than the principal? No. Yeah, on. I want everybody to have a chance to speak for the first time before we get to the read. That's fine. That's fine. Right. Right. Um, yeah, that's fine. My name is Brian Hamilton, and I'm the very proud principal of Debonair K-8 Center. Yes, sir. I do not have any suggestions for you. Um, I'm not an expert in this field, so I don't have uh, expertise in this area. I think you've heard plenty of suggestions here tonight. But I want to let you know that um, as the principal of Debonair, uh, we have 1,505 students in our school. Um, I treat 1,500 uh, and five students as if they were my own each and every single day. I'm charged with accepting them safely in the morning and safely in the afternoon. Um, you said you were there this afternoon. I want to let you know I was probably in, in sight if you were anywhere near the school because I am out there every single day with a little um, uneasiness in my stomach to look at the traffic in the, in the um, after mornings and afternoons and I do what I can to make sure that each, of our, uh, each and every one of our students gets home safely because these parents and these proud parents leave their prized possessions with me under my care every single day. 
So I can only suggest to you that you said you put out a survey of 60,000. Um, with all due respect, I really think the survey was here tonight um, because you heard the voice, the true voice, and not via an email or in, in writing. I think you heard the true voice of this wonderful community. I've learned very quickly since July 1st, since I came on board, that this is a very, very close, tight, knit community. Since I am the principal there, I am a part of this community, and these children are our future in this community, and um, we are providing the future for them, and I hope that the future is a safe one, that they can enjoy this community and not leave for, the, um, for any other reason. So I, I ask you respectfully, take everything that they've said to heart before you make a decision, even if it involves a delay, but involve them in this process. Please give us the answers that we've been seeking. And if this does improve, I, I, I really hope it does. But I just don't know the answer, and I think that's why we're all here tonight. So I thank you for your time, and um, go Jaguars. Thank you. Thank you very much.